seven years older than Lemieux, a little bit taller, reach the same. The officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. Madison Square Garden, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, with head trainer Abel Sanchez, standing five feet, 10 and a half, official weight, 159, one half pound. This Olympic medalist now has a perfect professional record consisting of 33 fights, 33 victories, including 30 wins by knockout, with 17 KOs in three rounds or less, and he has won 20, consecutive fights by knockout. He's recognized with having the greatest KO percentage in middleweight championship history from Karaganda, Kazakhstan in California, USA, the reigning, defending, undefeated interim WBC, IBO, WBA, middleweight champion of the world, Gennady. Triple J, go love And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Mark Ramsey. He stands five feet nine and officially weighs in at 159 and three quarter pounds. Wearing purple, his outstanding professional record 34 victories, including 31 knockouts with 27 KOs in three rounds or less. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, presenting the reigning, defending IBF middleweight champion of the world, Mesdames et Messieurs, David Ring will get pretty clear pretty quick. We'll go into the middle. Any final words will come now. And then it is combat. Good, good evening, gentlemen. You both see the instructions. I want you to obey the commands, protect yourselves at, at all times. Right now, everything below the letters here is going to be lumped. Everything below the letters here is going to be lumped. Tap it up. Here we go. All right, Golovkin's trunk's a little high as recognized by Steve Willis. Golovkin, the top name for quite some time, is on an incredible roll. And Lemieux holding a belt. He had no expectations. He's got to go over to the other guy. Golovkin and Lemieux. The jab here by Golovkin. All right. Double jab here by Golovkin. You never know what will happen. Very few people expect this to go that long. We'll see if that's how it plays out. Or do you guys see something else? And like I said, the two major punches as Triple G and Lemieux is, you're going to see some fireworks. But right now, you're getting a filling out process, and they're both trying to figure out what they can get away with, what they can land, and what each man's going to allow to happen. Jab out here by Golovkin. Triple G can box. Remember, he's a former amateur world star. He was a silver medalist in 2004 at the Olympics. Yeah, and he's a three-time amateur world champion. 
So with those credentials, he can box greatly. He just showed a lot of punching power. He's a boxer puncher, that's what they call him. He's under that script. Good jab here by Golovkin, and Lemieux trying to get inside of it. See when Lemieux comes in, though, he had his chin out after he stopped. That's the kind of thing that Golovkin will be looking for. Yeah, Golovkin was going, is going to try some things. He's just doing a filling that process, Golovkin. It's still early in this fight. If it goes to the third or fourth round. Big shot by Golovkin. He hurt Lemieux. And a good body shot. I, Golovkin has checked in in the power department. And then there's a good right hand. Lemieux, not to be cheated, comes back with one of his own. I do believe, watching both men box previous to this fight, that Triple G is the harder puncher of the two. And I believe that if he lands anywhere specifically, he can hurt you. And he's gotten to Lemieux here. But Lemieux not stepping back. He's trying to come forward and lands a hook of his own as we get to the end of round one. Sent to David Lemieux, second round action. Pair of middleweight champions, Golovkin and Lemieux, are sold out Madison Square Garden. Up with it, Dave Fontempo and Kevin Kelly with you from the Mecca. They're both starting to open up on both of them. They're both trying to, the first round, like I said, was a filling out process. The second round is going to be more or less from trying to take control, who's going to dictate the tempo, who's going to control the action. So what we're about to see right now, um, I have the first round score dead even. Um, we're about to find out in round two who's going to take control of this fight. And we'll probably find out pretty soon whether we will need the judges. Golovkin nailed Lemieux. A couple of right hands in the first round. And Abel Sanchez said to him, you saw that right hand, right? Go back to it. Well, what he wants them to do is catch Lemieux reaching in. Uh, Lemieux is very careless when he reaches in. As you can see, at certain times, he'll try to hit Triple G, and he'll reach in, and he overcommits. And that's when Abel Sanchez wants Triple G to throw his right hand. Lemieux is a... Uh, Boxing well, but he needs to come back to the jab off the right hand. So he throws the right hand, he's come back to the jab to put you back on balance. It's just a rule of thumb for boxing. Golovkin missing over the top, but not that time. He tattooed Lemieux with that right hand. Lemieux's face is red, very red right now. Lemieux misses with his right hand, and then Golovkin positioning himself. You know, well, here you get the witness. People always said from the Monroe fight about Triple G that he takes too many punches. And I explained that he's a highly decorated amateur. He don't have to get hit. And you can notice here today, he's not getting hit with anything that's clean or hard or that's even accurate by Lemieux. And the Triple G champ. Gaining fervor as he nails the new with a right hand. And the jab, he's doing a good job boxing. He's tattooing that eye area. The new backing up. All the remnants of an uphill battle for the new as Golovkin drills him again. Fighting smoothly through two. Well, like I said, it's based on the corners, on how effective they maneuver their man. 
Lemieux lost the last round. Um, he has to get back into this fight. Uh, they're asking Lothigan to throw his, ja his jab and to throw his hook off his jab, which will bring Lemieux into the right hand. Um, on Lemieux's camp, they want him to stay more active with his jab and slide in behind his jab and throw his right hand. So it's a battle of the right hands. Let's talk a little bit about the point you made about Golovkin, the jab and the hook leading him into the right hand. How do you set that up? How do you execute that? Well, like, like Abel Sanchez said, he's got to throw the right hand, throw a hook off it, which will drive the mule to the right hand, and then execute the right hand. So how he does that is he, you see every time he's popping a jab, but he's not throwing the hook off of it. Because Abel wants to set him up for the right hand. As you can see, he's jabbing, he's jabbing, he's jabbing, but right there, jab, and then hook off the jab. So he's throwing the right hand with no hook off the jab. So that's why he's not setting the mule up for the right hand. Getting part of it done with the jab, but not the hook off the jab. So that's the hook without the jab. Yeah, he hooked, then he jabbed. He's got it backwards. It's supposed to jab, then hook. Hey, but you don't always see things in perfect sequence when you're in there. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you gotta go for it rather than look for it to happen. Sometimes, you know, Abel sees if Triple G pays a little bit of attention to what Lemieux is doing off his jab, then he'll see that he has the opening. Left hook by Lemieux. It's very, it's weird that Lofton has the reach advantage. It yeah. seems like he has the reach advantage, but the reach advantage is pretty much measured the same. Yeah, Lofton does land that hook. Looking for an opening, and then Lemieux got there with the jab as Golovkin was studying an angle. Now Lemieux is missing a lot of shots, and Abel Sanchez, I think, believe is trying to tell Golovkin to throw the punch after he misses, to counter it. But Golovkin, because of his stature, Forcing Lemieux to fire from a little further out. And he's coming up short. He doesn't want to get too close and get countered. So as a result, he's coming up short. Hey! As the third round. Jab is good, but move with it. Win to round four. Dave Fontempo and Kevin Kelly with you at Madison Square Garden, where Gennady Golovkin and David Lemieux are in the summit match of middleweight champions. And this is a, a power punches fight. You know, uh, if, if he was undefeated, I would say somebody's got old gotta go. But he's defeated already twice, so I'm just saying somebody's, somebody's nose your head, gotta go. Your head. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's belt has to be dealt. Right? Yeah, something, something like that. in there. Because uh, right now, with two big power punches in the middle of the division, it's probably the hardest punches in that division right now. And you trying to make a run at Golovkin. Now, Golovkin is paying a lot of attention to details. I can see that right here. He's not being overzealous, reaching, reaching in, trying to land a punch, get countered. You know, the public is ready for that fight to break out that we talked about. Right now, it's just a break, breakdown process of both men. I'm still very neutral on this fight as of three rounds, but we're going to see what happens in round four and five if you are watching next. If it goes that far. Lemieux trying to get inside the jab and go to work on the body. Good hook by Lemieux. The Abel Sanchez has been telling him about the jab. Now, how much influence do you usually give a corner man, Kevin? Is, is it, you take it, you obey his instructions, and you take it, we'll have to get to that, as Golovkin nails Lemieux. Crowd up on their feet. Big shots. Lemieux being driven back. Here comes Golovkin with his first serious surge. Good right hand by Golovkin. Lemieux took it. 
Off balance right hand gets in by Golovkin. And the jab. That's yeah, Golovkin throwing some punches that are leaving the mark. Exciting exchanges. Um, either that's a confidence breaker or he wasted some energy on Lemieux. <laughs> so right now Lemieux is still standing. He, he took those punches pretty well. I give him credit. He hung in there. I don't discount him. Here he comes back. All those misses is hurting Lemieux's energy level. Because when you miss fights, it's like paying Tekken. The energy level goes down. Well, that's the cut at the bell for Golovkin. And they can't watch Steve it. Willis, his facial expression almost is like, wow. Well, he's watching this fight, too. I believe as a referee, it's very hard okay. to be in the ring with these two men, these two power punches, and not be such a spectator of the sport, too, at the same time. You should be a little bit of a fan as the Triple G chants come up. He buzzed David Lemieux in the last round. But Lemieux has lasted into the fifth. A lot of people did not think it would get this far. I predicted in my, in my views of both men, not discounting David Lemieux at all, a seventh round stoppage um, by Triple G. All right. But we'll see. Like I said, you know, the guy that hits like a mule, anything's possible. And he's not landing anything serious. He's coming up short. It seems that even though they say that the reach is the same, it seems that Lemieux's punches are coming up short, like he has the shorter arms of the two. He's hitting a lot of air. So how do you take reach away, even if, regardless of what the numbers say, you do certain little things and you can remove a guy's reach. Well, like I said earlier, it's about distance. Um, Triple G knows his distance. And one thing about it, he knows exactly how to pull away from a shot. See, he got hit right there. And here comes Lemieux with some action. He squared up and then nailed Golovkin. And Golovkin, no reaction from him. So it's amazing. He takes the shot pretty well. But Lemieux representing his belt well. Jab in the right hand by Galante. Oh, good jab, stiff one, driving Lemieux back. He's breaking Lemieux down right now. Um, if he starts ripping away those body shots, I had a conversation one time with Abel Sanchez, and he told me that when he puts a body vest, which is a body armor protective vest, on guys in the gym, he penetrates the body vest. So his body punches, I believe, are his major weapon. The headshots are really not as, irre as relevant as the body shots. Boy, then you go into the ring with the guy with the vest after having done that, and, and you feel like you're punching at something a lot easier with the guy having no vest on, and then you're going to really sink those body shots into him. Yeah, and there's no need for a referee in this. Oh. The body shots. Oh, well, now there is a need for a referee because Golovkin hit the mule is down. It was yeah. unintentional. That's your follow through. But like I said, the body shots that, that Triple G throws are much harder than the head shots. As the round ends, just in time for Lemieux. Time it. All right, it's round six. And the fireworks expected from Golovkin and Lemieux have gone off. Now, one or two things can happen here. Triple G can get careless, get caught reaching in, because he wants the body no now. Punch. Or Lemieux is really down deep inside, not really to participate in this fight. Big right hand by Lemieux. Big left hook by Lemieux. Good right hand by Golovkin. Good jab by Lemieux. Well, Triple G has got to stay to the body where he's effective. And Lemieux is definitely catching Triple G with some shots as he commits. Good stiff jab by Golovkin. Good right hand. 
Lemieux's actions have slowed. Still does land a nice hook, though. Watch floor. Good left hook to the body by Golovkin. Lemieux's shots are so much shorter than Golovkin's shots. Golovkin is throwing shots that are, seem like they're longer. It's just it's weird. It's like he knows how to keep his range without Lemieux hitting him at all times. Lemieux is firing his shots from further out. Not getting close enough something. first, and that's where the power and the mystique of Golovkin comes into thwart him. And I wonder if uh, Triple G is not going downstairs, afraid of being counted upstairs. And that, that's a question I think about, because usually he goes downstairs on an opponent, about now. Well, showing you know, some respect for Lemieux's power, but He's keeping his distance and setting it up. Jabbing. His jab is like a punch. And so it's punishing the face of David Lemieux. Well, you can stay outside, and it's a bit more of a risk-free environment for Triple G. And then the left hook. But there you get an idea why he didn't get too close to mix with it, as Lemieux landed a good left hook. But Golovkin answered, but Lemieux did crack him. Oh yeah, Lemieux's making Triple G pay attention right now. Again, a little after the bell by Lemieux, uh, by uh, Golovkin. Golovkin and David Lemieux, the fight we expected. And we're getting it. Yeah, they definitely both warmed up right about now. Two middleweight champions with puncher's reputations. They have found a way to unleash their offense. Golovkin has dropped Lemieux once. Lemieux showed some metal and resilience in the last round. Dave Bontempo and Kevin Kelly with you. Madison Square Garden. Two middleweight title holders. Show me something, David. Lemieux stalking. He's talking, he's talking, but he's talking in a, in a way where he's, he's, he's trying to catch Triple G reaching in. And um, he's got to abandon that game plan. He's got to throw things behind a jab. That's what Triple G's doing, throwing things behind hey, time, the jab. Hey, time, time, time. Come here, come here, David. Come here, come here. Doctor, doctor. Equipment problem here. I don't know if it's bleeding. They're calling the doctor to take a okay. look at it. Yeah, I want to make sure. That his okay. nose is not broken. Some guys will fight through the broken nose. Last night there was a fighter getting through that. That's what fighters do. Yeah, it's, it's overcome the pain. It's part of the job. And the mule trying to make it even more interesting. Sensing, you know, once the referee or the doctor looks at you, you can sense that maybe something would happen to stop the fight, and you have more urgency. Well, that created urgency for him. Um, the only problem about that urgency, he can run into something. And that urgency can cause a lot of damage that Triple G is doing. He's already doing it with the jab. But then it can help him, too. So it's good and bads about on both sides. I think there's more upside to the urgency, even if it goes bad, because otherwise you're just on the end of the Lofton's punches, and you're not doing enough if you're Lemieux. Take your chances. Here's Lemieux as Golovkin is taking his chances. I'm still kind of confused why Golovkin didn't want to go downstairs. Golovkin likes going downstairs. Golovkin. Well, he might be, as you suggested earlier, wants to be double sure. He doesn't get close enough to be countered. One thing about Lemieux, he's waiting for the counter. He, you know, it's like backing a cat into a corner. That's when they're most dangerous. 
And you might be thinking, please come to the body and get in here so I can nail you. It's amazing that Triple G standing right there and he can't be hit. Golovkin, 20 knockouts in a row. And are you still there? Good slugfest in spots between Gennady Golovkin and David Lemieux. And at other times, Golovkin has been a boxer. But this matchup of the middleweight champions has been a pleasing one. You got to give a lot of credit to Lemieux and a lot of credit to Triple G. Uh, both men are going to exchange at times, test their punching power. Um, it's amazing that they have the same reach on record, but it seems that the Lemieux's punches come up short. Or well, Glavkin's defense is just that good. Well, I think it's because Lemieux is starting his attack from too far back, which is a testament to Golovkin's defense. And he's launching those punches from, well, maybe six to eight inches further back than he should be. And then you're not getting there. Well, the one thing Triple G does, he pulls back just enough to make a miss, as you can see. He'll throw his shot, and then he'll step back. Them body shots are really wearing down Lemieux. Going to the body now, Jed from Golovkin, opening it up now. Trying to stalk in, and there's a good right hand by Lemieux. He's trying to close the show. Left this side, Golovkin, and he did close the show. Just by putting the pressure on. You're looking at the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. It seemed abrupt, but when you break a guy down, Wear him down. You might get an abrupt stoppage. Oh, the Square Garden referee, Steve Willis, has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 32 seconds of round number eight. The winner by TKO victory. The knockout streak continues now up to 21 consecutive KOs. His record 34 and 0, 31 knockouts. And he is now the unified IBF, IBO, WBA, interim WBC, middleweight champion of the world, Damagas Bala, Gennady. Gennadyovich, Triple G!